good evening to everyone on behalf of uh, association for veterinary dermatology india and intas animal health we welcome all of you for this dermatology webinar i welcome uh, dr uh, deepa who is a guest speaker today and uh, she is from pukot uh, working in uh, preventive medicine department and uh, I also welcome Dr. Nitin Bhatia and Dr. Amanjot Singh uh, for uh, coordinating this program. Uh, uh, since uh, we have got a lot of uh, issues with the parasite in skin disease, uh, uh, so we thought uh, we will go for in detail about, uh, about treatment, control, how to control all those things uh, we will have uh, refreshing. So this, pro uh, this program will meet out those uh, needs. Uh, I uh, request Dr. Nidin Bhatia to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are actually privileged to have Dr. Deepa from Pokot Veterinary College. Dr. Deepa is a assistant professor and head department of veterinary epidemiology and preventive medicine at Pokot. Uh, she is a good mix of a field veterinarian and an academician as she has started her career as a field vet in Kerala and then she has moved over to the academic area. So we once again welcome Dr. Deepa for an elaborate session on parasites in company animals and how to prevent and control them. Over to Dr. Deepa. Good evening to all. First of all, I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Nagaraj sir for uh, inviting me for this uh, class, for giving me this opportunity for taking this class. I would like to also express my deep sense of sincere thanks to Dr. Nidim Bhatti and Indus team for wholehearted support for this seminar. Shall I start, yeah. sir? Sir, I just. Uh, yeah. This, uh, the topic for this uh, my uh, presentation is parasitic skin diseases of companion animals with this emphasis to treatment and control. And so that uh, my overview of this uh, presentation just give the introduction and about the ectoparasiticides that is commonly used and some of the sector parasites like ticks, fleas and most of the important mains and also this conclusion. As you all know, the ectoparasites, they are the most common and important part of the skin diseases of companion animals, not only companion animals, but also for the livestock diseases. Livestock also, it's very important. It causes a life-threatening anemia and also it causes the most of the dermatitis, zoonotic infections. And they are also responsive for the transmission of the so most vector-borne diseases, especially the ticks. You know that most it is uh, responsive for the transmission of tick-borne diseases like babesia, dysiosis, and so many so on diseases. And one study conducted in Karnataka shows that the prevalence of around 49 percentage of vector parasitism in dogs, and that also high in case of stray dogs. And one of the study in Kerala about the mite infestation showed the high infestation of Demodex canis. With this introduction, I, I will go to this some of the ectoparasiticides that is commonly used. Ectoparasiticides should be an ideal ectoparasiticide should be an effective repellent and should have an adulticide action. It should be persistent and it should be stable in the light. It should not be destroyed by sunlight. And most important is to be able to treat the environment because most of this uh, ectoparasites, uh, ectoparasites life cycle have is mostly in the environment. So should we take care of the environment also? Environmental stages also for prevention of this type of ectoparasites. Coming to the most first important, first one, that one is the pyrethrins. Pyrethrins and pyrethroids. Pyrethrin, you know that is the most uh, first identified. That is natural pyrethrins. That is from the chrysanthemum flower. That is uh, extracted the natural pyrethrins. They are having the rapid action, but the action is brief, and they are relatively lack of toxicity for dogs and cats. 
So this pyrethrin had modified as synthetically and then this new, new synthetic, synthetic pyrethroids have come. Synthetic pyrethroids have great potency and they have residual effects, but it is uh, some of these species like cats are less tolerated by the uh, uh, synthetic pyrethroids like permethrin and because it lack the gluconidase enzyme so that it uh, cannot be tolerated uh, synthetic pyrethroids. Otherwise, it is very effective drug and uh, next that is coming is the choline esterase inhibitor. Choline esterase inhibitor involves the OP compounds, OP compounds and carbamates. Their mechanism of action is that inhibit the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. As, and the OP compound it is more persistent and carbamates are in their action is reversible. Advantage is that it have the prolonged action and potency and the disadvantage is that there is a low margin of safety and toxicity. Coming to the macrocyclic lactones, macrocyclic lactones involves evermectin. Evermectin involves ivermectin and doramectin, and semi-synthetic evermectins that involves salamectin, eprinomectin, and milbimycin is uh, 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 another group. Milbimycin involves milbimycin and semi-synthetic milbimycin like moxidectin. And the mechanism of action is that uh, macrocyclic lactones that increase the influx of chloride and that is mainly GABA agonist and will bind to this uh, glutamate chloride channel increase influx of the chloride ion to the nerve cells. Formamidins, formamidins involves amitras. Amitras, their mechanism of action is that it will bind, it, uh, binds to this octopamine receptors monoamine oxide inhibitors. Motopamine receptors in the central nervous system of the arthropods and it causes a monoamine oxide inhibitor and alpha 2 adrogenic agonist action. Like in the case of silicin also, they are alpha 2 adrogenic agonist. This but it is toxic to cats. It should be used carefully. It should not be used in the case of cats. Then phenylpyrazoles. Phenylpyrazoles involves fipronil, Commonly used is fipronil, pyriprol also is fipronil is commonly used. It is mainly GABA antagonistic and inhibit the in, in, uh, chloride ion influx into this nervous system. They are very lipophilic and there is a prolonged residual activity. They are toxic to fish, aquatic invertebrates, honeybees and chicken also it is very toxic. But it does not bioaccumulate just like organochlorine compounds there does not bioaccumulate and there is a less environmental pollution with this vipronin. Insect growth regulators, insect growth regulators uh, that is uh, used that inhibit the developmental stages of immature stage that will inhibit the metamorphosis stage into this uh, there are that uh, in the case of flea that is uh, egg larva uh, that uh, stages will be Metam complete metamorphosis that will be inhibited by this immature stage that involves inverse in insect growth regulators and insect developmental inhibitors. Insect growth regulators like juvenile hormone mimics. They mimic like juvenile hormone and they bind to this juvenile hormone receptors and inhibit the metamorphosis of this uh, stage. Metamorphosis I will not develop into adult. It involves methoprin, phenoxicar, pyriproxifen. And insect development inhibitors inhibit the chitin synthesis. Chitin is important in the exoskeleton part of this uh, different stages and inhibit the chitin synthesis and prevent the development of different stages. That involves lufinuron, diflubenzuron, cyromazin. And this will have more effect on the fleas which will undergo the complete metamorphosis but not in the case of ticks, which is not have the complete metamorphosis stage. Neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids involves imidacloprid, nitinpyram, dinotifron, and that will have this inhibition at the acetylcholine receptors. And there will be increased influx of the sodium ion at nicotinic effects. So advantage is that it has the potent residual activity Disadvantage is that it is readily soluble in water, so that swimming or bathing can reduce its duration of the activity. Imidacloprid is very good that is used as topical application. Nitin pyram that can be used as oral. 
oral product. It is used in the flea, very rapid action for this nitapiram. And within 20 to 30 minutes, it will show the action. There will be 100 percentage flea mortality can be seen within three to four hours. So that is also rapidly eliminated from the body within 24 to 48 hours. Dinotiforon, it is the newest group in this and it is used as a spot tone. Isoxazolines, isoxazolines uh, now newer coming drug that blocks the sathropod ligand related florent channels and like in this fibronin and it is different actions like fibronin but it is GABA antagonist action and that comes the fluoralanar, sarolanar, afoxalanar and lotilanar. These are the four drugs that is under the isoxazolines. They are orally given the orally and it is mainly effective for the flea and tick, but it's also effective for mange. Coming to this now, this is a short in short about this ectoparasiticides. And now this ectoparasites come in the first ticks. Ticks are the very important. And the important ticks affecting dogs are Rifisapala sanguinis, that is brown dot tick, Hemophysalis, that is important in the case of vector of Babesia gypsoni. Rifisapalus, it is a uh, vector for the many diseases like babesiosis, erlichiosis, uh, so many diseases like uh, all anaplasmosis. Dogs affect much more than ticks than that of cats because dogs, uh, cats have the grooming grooming behavior that itself reduces this uh, uh, affections, uh, tick affect infect infestation in case of cats. It mainly causes anemia, it sucks the blood, causes anemia, tick paralysis. Tick paralysis. Even the single tick can transmit the disease. It mainly the causes babesiosis, erlichiosis, hepatozoonosis, Lyme diseases. This Borrelia caused by the Borrelia. And so this it is very important that remove the tick as soon as possible because the tick infection can transmit the many diseases about this vector borne diseases. I mean to the tick borne life cycle, tick's life cycle, it involves the egg. First the female tick after this mating, and they will remain on the host and they will come out and lay eggs in the environment. Female ticks age, lay eggs in the environment and they will die. And the larva that hatches uh, uh, from uh, in the suitable environment, that larva will come out and larva will attach to the one suitable host. Then larva will molt into the nymph in the environment. From this it will attach to the another suitable host then this nymph molt again into the adult in the environment. Adult spend majority of the time in the environment. So we can see this majority of this life cycle that is from the egg, larva, nymph and adult. Most of this majority also seen in the environment. So it is very important to take care of this environmental control also in the case of tick along with this uh, animal control on this animal. That is minimum 3 to 24 hour attachment is necessary to transmit the tick bone diseases and all over this body. It can be seen all over the body, especially on this non hairy areas like face, ears, interdigital space, inguinal or perianal region. Then coming to the treatment and the mainly the takes if it is a mild infestation, we can remove manually, but also we have to be careful when manual removing. And the topical insecticides that can be used are fipronil, uh, fipronil spray, amitra scholar, that is uh, uh, permethrin, permethrin plus imidacloprid, salamitin, etc. can be also used for the ticks. And the synthetic pyrethroids and amitras that is toxic to cats. And also along with the ticks, we have to control of the ticks, we have to take care of the concurrent tick bone diseases. If it is present, we have to take care of this concurrent tick-borne diseases. We have to treat for that one. Periodically, premises and environment should be take care of for the immature stages. Vacuuming, vacuum cleaning is very important, cleaning of the cages. And also we can spray on the grass of, because the ticks will be mostly present near the uh, grasses or the shrubbed areas. So the, the cutting of the grass near this uh, kennel and everything should be done. This is the sum of this uh, drugs that can be used in the case of kennels for the acid insecticides like carbaryl dusting powder can be done for the kennels and uh, cyfluthrin 
and cypermethrin can be done. Vegetable powder spray on this canals. MSFB concentrate spray can be done on the porches, cockroaches, lawns. Delta methrin, fipronil, MSFB concentrate spray on the canal. A propoxifer aerosol spray can be also done on the cracks and crevices because the eggs will be mostly laid on the cracks and crevices because the, it, it requires a, it will go to this against the light on the shaded areas. So the cracks and crevices will have the eggs. So we have to take care of that uh, eggs on the cracks and crevices also. And uh, if this uh, heating with the flame also can destroy with this uh, X or the cracks and crevices. Canals, clinics and all this has to be taken care of for this control of ticks. Along with this control on the animal, we have to be taken care of the canals and as well as the uh, areas nearby that uh, removal of the uh, cutting of this uh, grasses, shrubs and uh, cracks and crevices, all this should be taken care of. Next come in the fleas. Fleas are the wingless laterally flattened blood sucking insects. And the main flea suffering case of dogs, that is tenocephalid canis and tenocephalid felis, both of the cats and tenocephalid felis, mainly cats. It causes uh, a disease, uh, it causes vector for the dipyridium caninum. Mainly it causes topium infestation, dipyridium caninum, and also it causes uh, uh, bartonellosis. Cat scratch disease in human. It is a zoonotic infection it can also occur in human. Bartonellosis, cat scratch disease by this cat flea. Cat flea excreta can cause this infection. And spotted fever, recurrential infection. And this role in the phalan leukemia virus infection also not rural. And tenocephalid uh, can also cause this uh, flea allergic dermatitis. In the case of flea life cycle, it is the adult flea, adult flea, uh, uh, when, uh, adult flea lays the eggs and the eggs can reach us to the, becomes the larvae and the larvae can become the pupa and pupa will become this adult. And it requires this uh, survival on the adult flea that also that uh, all other stages occurs in the environment. And the adult flea requires a daily blood meal. It remains on the same host throughout the life. Whereas in the tick, I forgot to tell about that one host, two host and three host ticks are there. And Griffithcephalus and uh, Simophysalis are the three host ticks. It can affect the other host also. Whereas in the case of fleas, it affects the same host and remains on the host itself. And it can survive on the host for one to three weeks on the host. The fleas are well adapted to this indoor environment, mainly seen on the carpet floors, under furniture, cockroaches, etc. They are well adapted because it can remain on the pupa. It will spin on the cocoon and it becomes this pupa and can remain for an environment, especially on the indoor environments, carpet floors, under furniture, etc. And the outdoor it will occur mainly in the warm season. Warm climate will favor this. Uh, multiplication and uh, mom season, the occurrence will be more, incidence will be more. Clinical science, it mainly, it can cause us because of the flea saliva that when it is injected causes allergy and, and it can cause as a non flea allergic dermatitis also without allergy also in some animals. It can cause anemia, mild skin irritations. In that animals, we can see the turpon segments also sometimes we can give Turpum segments as a clue that it is an in flea infestation and some hot spot or acrylic granuloma. Can some its main causes of flea bite allergic dermatitis? Flea bite allergic dermatitis, it is most commonly occurs at three to five years of age. There will be alopecia and there will be intense pruritis. Pruritis will be very intense, very severe pruritis, crusted papules, lichenifications. And there will be hyperpigmentation. Mainly the area affected will be dorsal, lamprosacral areas, mediate part of the thigh, and sometimes ventral, little ventral areas also. But mainly the lesions are seen on the dorsal, lamprosacral area. You can see the lesions, pruritis, very severe pruritis, alopecia, anemia. You can see the lesions on the lamprosacral region. In case of cat, it can cause phalan miliary dermatitis. That is a small solid bump 
can be seen on the back, neck and face. That is Fallon miliary dermatitis. We can see also the free dirt. Free dirt can be seen and uh, if, we go, if we see on the sales, we can see as a free dirt. We can, uh, from the history, diagnosis from the history and clinical findings, mainly the lumbosacral areas like that will also give a clue that flea infestation. And combing is the most sensitive method to diagnose that case and combing and take this the dust on that uh, wet, uh, white uh, paper and add a little amount of water. We can see as a brown flea excreta, blood, that is blood brownish material can be seen on the paper. That is the best method for diagnosis of flea dirt. And we can visualize the flea also sometimes and flea excreta, visualization of terpum segments. And the response to therapy is also one of the clue for the diagnosis. It has to be differentiated from the diseases causing severe pruritis like atopy, food hypersensitivity, scabies, chalitiosis, pyoderma, dermatophytosis, dermaticosis, malassiziosis. And the treatment, it has to be affected and all the pet in the same household should be treated. And because it can affect the other animals also, so all the pets in the household should be treated. It, it should, it treatment involves treatment of animals plus environment. We have to take care of environmental stages also. So insecticides with insect growth regulators or insect uh, developmental inhibitors has to be used. That inhibit the chitin synthesis and that is and the one is juvenile hormone mimics. That's used as a spray, spot on or dips can be used. And imidacloprid, fipronil, salamitin. These are very petty for the fleas. And and this high efficacy, safety, and have the residual activity and has to be repeated every three weeks interval. And the bathing or swimming can degrade this efficacy. These are the different, some of the preparations are for salamity, this Ravalone stronghold, and in the case of a bear that is advocate imidacloprid with moxidatin, imidacloprid with permethrin is also that that can be used only for dogs Imidacloprid with pyriproxifin, fipronil plus s methopri fipronil spray itself is the. And the case of heavy flea infested environment, and we can go as a nitipiram that can be used as a therapeutic and prophylactically. Therapeutically, it can be used 1 milligram per kg orally every 24 to 48 hours for 1 to 2 weeks. And very rapid response can be seen. I told that it can be seen within 20 to 30 minutes starting and the complete efficacy can be seen within six hours and is very safe duck. Disadvantage is that it does not take care of the life cycle. It will not disrupt the life cycle, cannot take care of the environmental stages. As a prophylaxis, it can be given one milligram per kg on the day of the contact with the potentially infested animals. In case of severe pruritus is there, we can go for the glucocorticoids, prednisolone like can be given and the tapering doses in the case of dogs 0.5 milligram per kg body weight can be given, BID 3 to 7 days, then OD for 3 to 7 days, then every 48 hours for 3 to 7 days. In case of cattle, cats can give the methyl prednisolone acetate 4 milligram per, we can give the prednisolone also in case of cat. And cat media prednisolone can be also given 4 milligram per kg body weight subcutaneous two to three weeks apart. And this is found to be effective. Two to three weeks apart. Antihistamines are not found to be a little use only. And if there is a secondary pyoderma, we have to give a systemic antibiotics for three to four weeks. Whenever secondary pyoderma is there, don't go for the glucocorticoids. Control. Control in the case of it is main control is elimination of existing flea and elimination of the infected premises and prevention of reinfestation. These are the main aim for the flea infested flea control. And the indoor premises should be we have to use insecticide plus insecticide growth regulators. Scholars can be used. Outdoor environment, we can use the insecticide sprayers, powders, and cleaning of pets bedding. Carpet vacuum of vacuum cleaning of carpets is very important. Prevention of other animals like rats, stray dogs or cats. Other cats should not be 
allowed to enter on this region. Next uh, uh, one is set of parasite is important is lice. Lice that is uh, also it is highly host specific and the dog it is affecting our trichodactus canis that is chewing lice and sucking lice other and chewing lice that eat on the debris and to uh, sucking lice feed on the blood. We know that this cetosis in case of sucking lice in case of cat that is main chewing lice pellicola subrospatus. And then the life cycle of the slice is on the host only and the eggs, nits and adult it take about four to six weeks. And the most of this insecticides used for this flea and lice flea and tick will be take care of the lice also. Next important infection is in the main infestation and the most important is demodicosis. Demodicosis in case of dog. It is also called follicular mite or red mange. And this is an obligate parasite. It is a commensal on the body. It is normally present on the dog, but and there are in the whenever there is another immune deficiency or any other situations, it will overgrow and causes the disease. And the shorter form that is shorter and longer form is the and the shorter form is the demodex uh, canis and demodex uh, canis in the case of dog and demodex gatoi in case of cat. Demodex gatoi it's a very contagious infection in case of cat. It's also normally occur in the case of cats. Longer form demodex injai in case of dog and demodex catti in case of cats. And the transmission uh, it can occur in the case of when the during the first day after this birth, when the from the beach to the nursing neonates by the contact itself from the beach to nursing neonates, it can transmit on the first day itself. And this demodex is not con uh, contagious, this except the demodex gatoi that is contagious, and other it is not contagious and it is not mainly zoonotic infection. Life cycle. It produces the adult mites that produces egg, egg hatches to form the larvae and the larvae will have larvae develop into nymph and the nymph have the six legs nymph and then develop into eight legs adult. You can see this larva, uh, nymph and adult in the same animal host. It is unable to survive outside the host. We can see the egg larva larva with the larva and as well as nymph only six leg nymph and also this adult eight legs adult and all this it will take around three weeks for this development it is highly host adapted and to reside mainly in the case of hair follicles and sebaceous glands there are different forms of demodicosis that is localized form and generalized form localized forms involves cutaneous if there is a less than five patches, it is called cutaneous pododamidicosis. If single foot is affected, and demodetic otitis also can cause otitis also, but mainly it causes cutaneous form. And generalized form involves juvenile onset and adult onset. And in localized form, the mainly predisposing factors, it mainly occurs in the young one puppies, three to six months of old, and predisposing factors are under parasitism, poor nutrition, or any immunosuppressive agents or immunosuppressive therapy like glucocorticoids or immunosuppressive therapy and transient stress can cause this infection in the case of localized form in puppies around three to six months of old. And clinical signs you can see this uh, uh, localized one, one to five patchy areas of alopecia and there will be erythema, hyperpigmentation, scaling. And mostly it will be non pruritic unless there is a secondary bacterial infection, secondary bacterial infections, if the pyoderma is there, then it causes some pruritis. Otherwise, it is non pruritic mostly and it mostly occurs on the face and also on the periocular region, face and periocular region and the localized for most of this case to 90 percent spontaneously resolved within three to six weeks and that especially if it is affecting the young puppies, it is uh, mostly resolved. But we have, we have to go for only this topical therapy in this case. Diagnosis, we have to do the deep skin scraping. And uh, in the case of Demodex, if you take the deep skin scraping, always uh, uh, take with uh, some uh, with take uh, some mineral oils or liquid paraffin and it will help to attach the debris to that. And uh, we have to squeeze the skin. 
squeeze the skin uh, because to exclude this mite that is present in the hair follicles of sebaceous plant to exclude that mite we can uh, we have to squeeze this one and also whenever this uh, areas is there we have to take the multiple scrapings also and in this we can see this adult name flava ova can be seen coming to treatment and the secondary pyoderma is the and the second predisposing factors has to be treated and topically benzoyl peroxide lotions shampoo cream gel can be applied amitraz lotion can be also applied and we are never use this glucocorticoids in dermatosis or tetis we can give this amitraz mineral oil 1 is to 9 dilutions on the ear generalized form generalized form there is juvenile form and as well as adult onset juvenile form is mainly seen in the less than 18 months of age that is mainly occurs due to this inherited immune dysfunction and any immune deficiency can leads to juvenile form and that uh, dogs that should not be used for breeding generalized form should not be used for breeding because they have the genetic basis and adult onset is above 18 months of age usually it is about 3 years of age predisposing factors any uh, endocrinopathies like hyperadrenocorticism or hypothyroidism uh, diabetes mellitus immunosuppressive drug glucocorticoids parasitism neoplasia chemotherapy all this can predispose to this generalized adult onset of uh, dermatosis clinical signs that is it involves more than generalized it is more than five focal lesions or more than two body regions are affected and there will be diffuse alopecia you can see alopecia erythema hyperpigmentation lichenification crust papules and pruritus will be usually absent but can occur if there is a secondary bacterial infection and dermatitis injae it is in addition to this all the lesions can be seen in jai but uh, in addition that we can see this greasy seborrhea over the dorsum of the tongue uh, trunk dorsum of the region on the dorsum we can see as a greasy seborrhea in case of dermatitis injae infection this is the some of this comedons comedons can be also seen in the case of endocrinopathies hyperadrenocorticism and dermatosis also comedons can be seen erythema this lesions can be seen and facial dermatosis podo dermatosis can see crusty lesions can be seen generalized form we can see the erythema lesion erythema fully erythema red mange infestation crusty lesions and diagnosis i told that deep skin scraping we can have to take deep skin scraping always take uh, multiple skin scraping and to have to see for the mite if you see this one might uh, and also that will not be much significant but if it is seen with more than one might in every the clinical manifestation that is significant can if in the some areas we cannot able to take the deep skin scrapings like in the case of uh, around this eyes or uh, uh, in the case of uh, leg support uh, in the case of uh, less we cannot take that uh, uh, skin scrapings in that cases we can take the bunches uh, we can take that uh, hairs take a bunch of hairs that is trichogram trichograph that can be done we can see this dermatex mite we can we add a little amount of this uh, uh, liquid paraffin and we put a cow slip see under this microscope we can see this dermatex mite living mites can be seen itself if you use this case of uh, liquid paraffin mineral oil we i always see that we have to squeeze this uh, skin so that it will exclude this mite outside sometimes it is will causes the pustules also so in that pustules uh, we can take that uh, from the material from the pustule itself and uh, that uh, we can uh, add this uh, little drop of mineral oil and we can see for that mite also in the case of pustules coming to the treatment and in case of treatment uh, and here also in the case of uh, 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 in case of a uh, dermatex injury and all, we can take this acetate tape impression. If it takes this uh, acetate tape impression, we can see this organism. And uh, treatment adult onset underlying condition has to be treated because it mainly causes underlying condition that has to be treated. Female has to be neutered because uh, female if it is neutered because estrus and uh, other pregnancy can cause the relapse of this infection. Secondary pyoderma. Uh, so if it is there, you have to treat with antibiotic for three to four weeks. 
and weekly bath has to be given with benzoate peroxide shampoo benzoate peroxide shampoo will helps to follicular flushing it helps to flushing of this uh, flushing and after that followed with the amitras we can use this for 0.03 to 0.05 percentage of amitra solution and powder dominicosis powder dominicosis we have to we can dip this foot in 0.125 percentage of amitra solution every 1 to 3 days ivermectin can be given parallelly 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg body weight or can be given subcutaneously weekly 0.4 to 0.6 mg per kg weekly once for 6 to 8 weeks until this negative skin scraping maybe my sin oxin can be given parallelly 0.5 mg per kg body weight and newest drug that is coming is fluralanar sarolanar avoxanelar can be used always remember that should not use this glucocorticoids when this fit in the dermatocosis and no dog should be considered cured until 12 months after the treatment has stopped so there is a chance for the relapse so we have to be see that animal is not cured until 12 months after this treatment has stopped and feline dermatocosis feline dermatocosis is caused by dermatocosis cat and dermatocosis get to it the cat that is also common cell of cat skin and the infection is rare in the case of cat dermatitis catoi that is contagious and causes emergy pruritic skin disease of of cat catoi that is predisposing factors are the immunosuppressive disease or drugs feline immunodeficiency virus feline leukemia toxoplasmosis all this can predispose to infection clinical signs that is both in localized and generalized form is the it causes mainly pruritis patchy regional asymmetric alopecia pruritis is mostly seen in case of dermatitis catoi and that is patchy symmetrical alopecia can be also seen scaling crust hyperpigmentation and sometimes otitis as can also lesions are mainly seen on the head neck limbs and also on the flank region ventrum diagnosis by the deep and superficial skin scraping has to be taken because it is very difficult to get a dermatitis catoi we have to take both deep as well as superficial skin scraping acetate tape impression smear can be also taken to detect this dermatitis catoi and also response to lime sulfur dip therapy is also give a clue that it's a dermatitis it has to be differential diagnosis we can see here that uh, uh, symmetrical alopecia in case of cat and dermato that do cause in this pruritus like dermatophytosis ectoparasitic diseases chelatiosis uh, other uh, flea allergy uh, food allergies scabies and coming to treatment we can give the lime sulfur dip 2 percentage of lime sulfur dip weekly and can be cured after 4 to 6 weeks and better to put this elizabethan collar to prevent the licking because licking can cause the some ulcerations or something that uh, can cause so that uh, better to prevent this licking doramethin is also safe that is 600 microgram per kg body weight subcutaneous can be given weekly two to three injections can be given doramethin moxidectin spotton can be also used and some of this drug that is used in the case of uh, dermatocosis amitras that is uh, amitras whenever you are using that we have to clip the better to clip the hair in the case of medium and long haired dogs benzoate peroxide shampoo for the follicular flushing it has to be done in well ventilated areas with the protective gloves and it is effective for the ticks and as well as mites also but it is not be used for the cats and pups below 4 months of age allow to dry after application and not give this bath one week after this application should not give this bath for one week after application tick and flea we can give this 2 ml per liter and mange 3 to 4 ml per liter of water and if any uh, toxicity is there we can have to go the specific candidate is atimamazole atimamazole and yohibin can be used 0.1 mg per kg body weight systemic macrocyclic lactone that i told that ivermectin can be used but uh, if you use this oral treatment that it has the oral long long half life is there which can lead to chronic toxicity so better to go for a subcutaneous injection
long if this is given a long daily uh, administration can be used to chronic toxicity because it has a long half life maybe by see oxib 0.5 mg per kg body weight can be given orally for that it can be for 12 to 30 weeks Milvimycin can be given to cooling drugs or cold is also because uh, in the ivermectin which can is contraindicated or cannot be used in the cold is and uh, here milvimycin can be given and it has a wide margin of safety. And newer group drugs is isoxazole that involves fluoralena bravetto. We know that it is rapidly absorbed. Maximum concentration reaches 24 hours up to 1, 1, 2 days. And will be having after single oral administration. It is an antagonist of GABA and causes hyper excitation of the nurses. And it has to be given along with the food. The absorption will be more with the food. And every three months we have to give 25 milligram per kg and can be used in the coli breeds also with the dogs with having MDR mutation, first mutation, MDR1 mutation, and can be given two months pups, above two months pups and above. 2 kg body weight safety margin five times more than label dose can be used for the fleas, ticks and mage and it has to be used with caution in history of the dogs with the seizures or neurological disorder in breeding which we can give 10 days prior to mating 10 days prior to mating and three months later which will prevent that infection to the young ones breeding which 10 days prior to mating and three months later sarolena simbarica that it can be used over the six months of age. That is also monthly administration, 2.5 milligram per kg body weight. Afoxanana, nest guard, 2.5 milligram per kg body weight. Puppies over eight weeks of age. It kills, uh, kills fleas before reproduction, prevent the household contamination. Lotilena, credilo. That is monthly interval, 20 milligram per kg body weight, eight weeks of age above can be given. Next comes this canine scabies. Canine scabies, which is caused by Sarcoptus scabies, Varcanis, it is highly contagious disease. It's a superficial burrowing mite. Superficial burrowing mite that mainly occurs on the stratum corneum. It causes intense pruritis. And, uh, and also, uh, one of the uh, indications that it responds poorly to corticosteroids. If you give along this corticosteroids, uh, uh, and, uh, it will not respond. So that case is uh, some itching intense pruritus, which is not responding to this corticosteroids. We can consider this as some scabies and this uh, itching will worsen during this night. Previous history that is uh, animals come in contact with the other stray dogs or grooming facilities or boarding facilities or animal shelter. And in the it is a highly contagious. So the multiple household more than one dog will be affected. And this pruritus is poorly controlled by corticosteroid salon. If you are given this corticosteroid salon without this main therapy, the pruritus will not, it will be remain. So that also one of the indications that is a scanner scabies. It's a zoonotic infection and uh, we have to be take care of that one. Scabies, it can affect the egg, larva, nymph and adult. And there is, it take four to six weeks for the development of initial lesion. It transmit this infection to other dogs also. So that will be have to take care of because uh, it takes four to six weeks for the development of the lesion. By that time, it will be transferred to this other dogs. And most season incidents will be more and below one year of age will be mostly affected. Clinical lesions that it causes papule, alopecia, erythema, crust. Crust can be seen. You can see this ear margin crust and ventral aspect of the region, mainly hook, elbow, ear margins, ventral abdomen, chest will be affected and there will be peripheral lymphadenopathy also. Diagnosis, we can see the spinal pedal reflex. When we uh, rub this ear between, between this thumb and forefinger, the ipsilateral, there will be uh, scratching by ipsilateral high limbs, shows a pinnal pedal reflex. We can take the superficial skin scraping, but sometimes it will get the false negative, real, false negative also. But deep skin scraping from the ear margin, elbow and hook can be also taken. And uh, uh, serology, ELISA can be take, ELISA can be done. Treatment, all the affected are in contact, animals should be treated. anti saboris shampoos should be used to remove this crust. Crust and all we have to remove with anti saboric shampoo like benzoyl peroxide or in the sulfur or salicylic acid preparations can be used. And scabies should be used every week for five weeks. Salamatin. 
Salamatin is licensed for this canine scape is topical 6 mg per kg body weight every two weeks interval for four times. In dogs, it can be used above four, six weeks of age and in case of cat, about eight weeks of age. Moxidectin. Moxidectin is a spot on. As a spot on, we can use uh, 2.5 mg per kg body weight for the dogs and 1 mg per kg body weight for cats and has to be repeated two weeks interval for three times. Amitraz once weekly for two to three, six weeks. Fipronil spray can be used 3 ml per kg two weeks interval for three times. And it's very good for the young puppies. Fipronil spray can be used for the very young puppies. Ivermectin can be used and uh, milbimycin oxy, lime sulfur dip, two to three percentage, especially in the case of young puppies, and can be used weekly for four to six weeks. Glucocorticoids can be used in the severely pruritic dog, but has to be used along with this uh, mighty saddle drugs, acaricidal uh, drugs. Secondary pyodoma is there. We have to take care of this antibiotic with the three to four weeks. And then that time glucocorticoid should not be used. And the disposal of beddings, cleaning of cages is also very important. Silence cabies, which is caused by notorious catty, that is said also sarcoptic mite that is contagious. It is borrowed superficially and multiple cat holes, more than one cat will be affected. And this very rare, seen rare, not address, uh, also rare in case of cats, but can affect the cats also. Intense pruritis, uh, dry crusted lesions can be seen. It is mainly affect the ear pinna, spread over the ears, head, face, and neck. Diagnosis from the skinscaping. It is easy to find this organism. Not address is easy to see the organism. Treatment. Affected animals in contact cats should be treated anti seborrheic shampoo, 2 to 3 percentage lime sulfur dip weekly under the skin scraping is negative. Can give this ivermectin, doramectin, salamectin, and uh, infected bedding has to be disposed. And the antiparasitic spray has to be used in the environment. Glucocorticoids can be used, and just like in the case of canine scabies, like with other drugs. And prednisolone has to be used 2 mg per kg or in the case of canine it is 1 mg per kg and the prednisolone in case of cat it is used 2 mg per kg 7 to 10 days. Secondary pyodoma has to be taken care of. Shailetiosis that is also called walking drug, plan drug. Shailetia mites that leaves on the hair and fur. Here also it is a contagious, highly contagious. And excessive scaling and dandruff can be seen, especially on the dorsal midline of the back. And here there are also pruritus may be mild to severe. It shows crusty lesions in cats and scabies like lesions in case of dogs. And we can see the direct visualization of mites and also by microscopy. The just like lime sulfur dip, ivermectin, salamectin, fipronic spray or spoton can be used. Ear mite that is autodactyl cyanotis that is uh, sauroptic mite that affect on the ear canal and skin surface. There is a brown crusty exudate in the ear canal. It is pruritic. Head shaking can be seen. Diagnosis here also that the pinnal pedal reflux can be seen in case of cats. Microscopy ear swab can be taken. Ear canal has to be cleaned to remove the debris. Ivermectin can be diluted 1 is to 9 with the propylene glycol and two to four drops can be instilled into the ear for three to four weeks. 10 percentage fibronin, two drops can be done one or twice, two to four weeks apart. Salamatin, spot on, every two weeks, four times. Ivermectin can be given, moxidectin can be given as a subcutaneous injection or in the perorally 10 days apart. Fibronin spray or spot on can be also used. Cat for mite. That is uh, Linascaris radowski hair coat. It is occurs in the hair coat. We can see as a salt and pepper appearance on the dosum of the back. Proritis will be minimum. And here also lime sulfur dip 2 percentage once in a week for four weeks. Ivermectin 0.3 milligram per kg body weight subcutaneous two week apart can be used. And this is in nutshell about this mite diagnostic test which we are using Damodex canis deep scrape high accuracy and Damodex catti deep scrape high accuracy and Damodex catte that is uh, gatoi that gatoi that is superficial scrape 
and also that is very difficult to get. So the Lyme suffer deep trial response treatment also give a conclusive evidence that damages get away. And sarcoptic superficial scrape response to treatment, pineal pitter reflex, or that it is, or um, it, uh, we can use this mineral oil preparation, superficial scrape, ear swabs, chelectilia, that is flea comb, tape preparation, superficial scrape can be used. And uh, that accuracy is moderate and not autodesk catty superficial scrape can be used. And in conclusion, ectoparasiticides can be used as therapeutic as well as in the prophylactically and, and visible infestation that requires a treatment to eliminate this infection. And in the case of uh, we have to take care of this environment also to prevent this infection. Modern ectoparasiticides et have this residual effect which can be used to profit laterally to prevent the reinfestation. So the flea and tick control should be tailored according to this individual pet characteristics, environmental and lifestyle characteristics. So parasite control is not one size fit all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am, okay. uh, taking us on an elaborate journey on to the parasitic diseases of company animals. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let us look at the questions which we have from the audience so that Shall I add uh, something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we, uh, I, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, Dr. Thank Deepa. you, sir. Thank Actually, you. recent report says that uh, this um, demodicosis treatment, uh, we, uh, the weekly intervals of injections are not uh, suitable. It is not uh, so effective. And it is, uh, they have given in consensus report, uh, it is not uh, uh, accepted and it is not, uh, not to be recommended and also if you if at all you give oral uh, ivermectin it has to be given 0.4 or 400 microgram to 600 microgram per kg body weight daily uh, if it is going to be acceptable by the dog see uh, some spits may not even a normal dose it may not suit uh, they will develop toxicity so we'll be nowadays we have got a very good uh, advanced drug like uh, Sara Lanar uh, or uh, this uh, Afoxal Lanar, all uh, all the isoxylurine groups are available that we can very well use because uh, the duration daily you need not give, you can give once in once in a month or according to the uh, scraping result we can uh, identify and give it. So that is the uh, one what I want to add. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, there are two basic comments coming up from people. Number one yes. is people understand that you have been in the field and now you're working in the college. So there is mm -hmm. a lot of requirement. It is not up to you, but it's a fact that there is a lot of requirement of facilities for dermatological section, both in college and especially polyclinics. Mm -hmm. So and secondly, one person, uh, two people have uh, just emphasized, Madam, you are too fast in explaining. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> Uh, the questions which come up is what are the treatment options for pediculosis in puppies? Pediculosis treatment in puppies, what is best recommended by you? Uh, puppies, we can use this fipronil. Fipronil can be used in the case of puppies and uh, also the lime sulfur dip is also effective in the case of uh, puppies means if it is uh, below eight weeks of age. It's about this eight weeks of age. We can use that uh, so many drugs that is used in the case of fleas and as well as for the ticks control that can be used in here also. If right. it is a okay. Madam, uh, one query is lichification and keratinization around the ears is too commonly seen. So what could be these lesions? How can we die? On the ears. Eyes, eyes, around the eyes. Eyes. Spectacle eyes. Okay, spectacle eyes is mostly seen in case of dermatosis. Mostly. 
that is uh, we can take that uh, bun uh, from the hairs can be taken and uh, just see under the microscope uh, for the hair plucking can be taken around the size periocular region that can be seen under this microscope we can identify the mainly this occurs in the dermatocosis infection could you re explain on acetate tape test okay Acetate tape uh, test that is acetate uh, that uh, tape is used to tape with the sticky area down. We have to press on that uh, sticky area on this uh, and uh, uh, just we can see on the slide. So that it can be seen, especially in the case of greasy occurrence in the case of Damodex Sinjai or in that uh, cases we can see that uh, uh, if you use some of the stain also, we can see the organisms directly also. If you use some uh, liquid paraffin or something on that one and uh, see, we can see the live mites also. And it is also used in the, some of the, if you identify the coque or in that uh, any organisms that can, we can stain it also with some diff diff or the methylene blue added, then we can see that organisms or coque also we can see. Mm -hmm. Uh, kindly elaborate on the prednisolone treatment in case of skin problems. When to use, how much to use, how to Pred follow the Pred uh, Prednisolone? Yeah. Okay, uh, sir. should not be used in the case of uh, dermatocosis because it can uh, flare up this infection. But other cases in the case of scabies or any other pruritis is there, we can go for the prednisolone. Prednisolone can be given and but we have to give along with that we have to give this specific drug with a, a caricide drug should be given along with this glucocorticoid whenever we are giving this glucocorticoid it should be tapered dose should be given to the tapered dose so the next question comes to you rather than Sir. to madam yes uh, next guard and brevecto are two products which are there in the market so yeah. uh, people also recommend that uh, also talk about side effects or okay. mortality. Is it true? What is your view as a clinician in both of you? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, actually, that uh, Braveto, I uh, I talk about this. Um, so clinicians in our batch also, they are recommending that uh, Braveto, they are given for the so many cases that is found to be effective only. From our uh, um, my classmates from the Kori Kori itself, Dr. Shahjan and all, they, they are given this uh, bravetto for so many dogs. This is very effective, found to be very effective. Only that uh, one or all the case uh, side effects that not observed any side effects for this uh, drug at present. Even in my practice, I never uh, got any uh, side effect. While using yeah. neck guard, Simbarika or Bravato. Bravato that gives a uh, protection for three months, but uh, the other cases we have to repeat monthly. Other drugs, that's all. Uh, Accordingly, cost is high. Uh, yeah, cost wise also. Ma'am, the last and the final question. If the skin <laughs> scraping is negative, then yeah. what should we do? What should we start ahead with the treatment with? Uh, is it likely to be a demodicosis or a scabies or? No, that also depends upon the clinical manifestations also. I have told about the clinical manifestations in each cases. So that depends upon the clinical manifestation. So many things, not only the skin scraping, we have to uh, see for the history, for the clinical findings. What are the clinical findings? We have to correlate with that one. And if this uh, not getting the skin scraping is negative, we, we have to see for the response to therapy also. In that case, some of the cases it is easy to get like in the some of this uh, uh, mites it is easy to get, but some cases it is uh, for the uh, sarcoptes it will be difficult to get. But in the case of dermatitis, it is uh, we can get that we have to take correct scrapings and all and we have to squeeze the skin that is very important for this extruding the mite. That is scraping technique also is very important. So what Madam wants to highlight is you have once your skin scrapings are negative, you have to correlate it with other symptoms, come out yeah. of the treatment and then decide your way forward. It could be differently different for different animals. Yes. Ma'am, we thank you for 
taking Thank us you. on a journey on parasitic skin infections of companion animals. It was good to have you as a speaker. Thank you, we sir. Thank, thank you on behalf of the entire uh, thank group. Yeah. Thank you. You, thank, you thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you a lot, sir. Thank you, sir.